Hi, thank you so much for joining me. In this video clip, I want to talk about the proposal by Planck um, that there is a particle nature to electromagnetic radiation. Certainly used to thinking about light as a wave, but what Planck proposed is that based on experimentation, actually, is that we can think of light as a little packet of energy called a photon. And so we're going to use E for energy. H is Planck's constant. It's in joules per second. And we have our frequency nu. So nu is our frequency. And it's in seconds to the minus one or hertz. And then we'll have to use the speed of light because we are talking about electromagnetic radiation. And then we have our wavelength, lambda, all of which I, I, most of which I talked about in a previous, not all, I did talk about Planck's constant, but most of which I talked about in my previous video uh, on this. Um, what I wish that more people would do for this energy is I wish that they would use energy per as the unit as being joules per photon. Now I often will do that um, but that's not typical. It's more typical that it's in just joules and so you would have to know if you were in say an AP class that you would have to go from joules per photon, AP would have to go joules per mole. Okay, and, and so that's this per photon is implied in the unit. Now, if you're watching this as an introductory video, you might not know what a mole is, so you just hang on to that thought for a while. Okay, let's do some calculations with these, and I like to use the guess method, not that I'm just going to guess my answer, um, but it does give you an educated way, an educated guess for getting at the answer. Um, I like to um, note my givens, and you can either list them or put the symbol above them like that. That can be a short way of doing that. So it says, there's my frequency, and what is my wavelength equal to? Okay, so those are my givens. Um, I always want us to check our units. In this case, we have seconds to the minus one. Our wavelength, we want in nanometers. And if you use the speed of light equal to 3.0 times 10 to the 17th nanometers per second, our units are okay. So now we need to get our equation. E stands for equation. So the speed of light is equal to lambda nu. And then we can substitute solve or solve and substitute, whichever you like to do best. Um, I often like to solve it first. So if I want to uh, get lambda all by itself, I have to divide both sides. The opposite operation of multiplication and division is uh, the opposite operation of multiplication is division. So C over frequency is my wavelength. So substitute and now I want to solve. So I have 3.0 times 10 to the 17th. You can put your units in here at this point. A lot of teachers really advocate that, um, but we checked our units up here. So if you, as long as you've done that step, you should be okay. And when I did this math, I get 300, oh, that's a crummy three, sorry about that kiddos, 317 nanometers. Now, the question asked, is light visible and gave us a hint to calculate the wavelength. Well, visible light goes from, let me do it this direction, goes from 700 nanometers to 400 nanometers. And since my 317 
is above 400, I know I'm not in the visible range. So if this is Roy G. Biv, 400 being um, the violet, I am above the violet or in the ultraviolet range. So, you know, that hopefully using some of those thought processes will um, spur your memorization a little bit. So let's try the next one. This time I'm given a wavelength. I'm asked for a frequency. Since my wavelength is in nanometers, I'm following the guess method, I'm not doing it explicit, but I'm getting my givens. Now, as long as I use C as 3.0 times 10 to the 17 nanometers um, per second, my units are okay. So now we've got to get our equation, C is equal to lambda nu. And this time I want to solve for frequency. So I'm going to rearrange this. C over lambda is frequency. So 3.0 times 10 to the 17th nanometers per second. We've checked our units, but it never hurts to um, include them. 7.23 times 10 to the minus fifth nanometers. You notice, I wanted to make this explicit, nanometers cancel and I'm left with seconds to the minus one. And when I plugged that into my calculator, I got uh, 4.15, I used three sig figs, times 10 to the 21st seconds to the minus one for my frequency of light. All right, I just want to do um, a couple more of these to make sure that you can uh, bring energy into this picture. So this time I have a frequency given to me of hertz. Remember hertz is the second one, uh, same unit as seconds to the minus one. And it says energy is equal to what? Okay, so seconds to the minus one is just great. I'm gonna write my equation E is equal to H nu, H is equal to 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34th joules times seconds. That's Planck's constant when he did that little packet or particle of energy. 7.85 times 10 to the 15th. Seconds to the minus 1 is 1 over seconds. Just wanted to make it explicit to you that those seconds cancel and we are left with 5.20 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. Okay, well what if we had, what if we wanted to do this and we were given wavelength instead? All right, so I have a wavelength and it wants to know the energy. Okay, and we now know wavelength in nanometers is okay as long as you use C equal to the times 10 to the 17th nanometers per second. Okay, now there's two ways you can use this. Um, I like to um, do the one-step mechanism where energy is HC over lambda. What I've done there is I've combined two formulas that the speed of light is lambda nu and if I solve that for frequency I can substitute that into this so you can do this you're you know welcome to do this you can take the first formula and solve for frequency then plug that into the second one and solve for energy Okay, or we can do this in one step. I personally prefer the one step, but for no, no real reason. You need to do what works best for your mind. <clears throat> so I would have energy 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34th times, I'm a little out of room, I'm going to rewrite that so you can see that a little bit better. 
energy is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34th oh, times the speed of light. I, I assume constants are, um, I don't worry about their significant figures. Um, in my classes, we assume that they're an exact number. I'd already checked all my units. This is in joules times seconds. So I'm going to end up with joules, and I got 3.6. This original given only has two sig figs times 10 to the minus 19th joules. Okay. And then finally, one more. I know this has been fast and furious but you can always slow down and rewind, which is one of the advantages of a video. So this time I have my energy, and I want to know if it's visible. To find out if it's visible, you have to solve for lambda in nanometers. So I'm going to use energy is hc over lambda. I'm going to rearrange that. I'm going to cross multiply so I have lambda is equal to hc over my energy. So lambda, six point that ubiquitous Planck's constant. Now I'm going to use, since I want lambda in nanometers, I'm going to stick with that 10 to the 17th for speed of light. My energy is 3.33 times 10 to the minus 19th. And when I solved this one, I got 597 nanometers. I always ask my students to check my math because you never know when I'm going to have one of those Odina moments and calculate it wrong like we all do. Um, in this case, I got 597, and so my answer is yes. Wow. That was a lot of math in there, um, but hopefully it was repetitive enough and you saw enough examples that you'll be able to just rock this on your own. Thanks so much for joining me.